in the contract requires an exercise starting March 17th. Now, normally that would just transfer to the Jets and it's not a big deal, but maybe there's a reason. Maybe this cannot be consummated until March 17th. It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a midday, terrific Tuckheads Tuesday edition of the mighty RTFP. And we've got Andrew Brandt in the house momentarily as we are still waiting for the smoke to come out in Florham Park, New Jersey. That indicates Aaron Rodgers will be there. You can bet Andrew and I will be talking a lot about what we think might be going on behind the scenes right now momentarily. This is the second of three shows this week. You can already listen to the College Draft Podcast where Emory Hunt had a very interesting number one ranked running back. It's not who you think it would be. Listen to the College Draft Podcast. We also already recorded the Even Money Betting Podcast, which should be mandatory before anyone bets on March Madness or fills out a bracket or anything. Trust me, guys, gals, go ahead. Listen to the Even Money Podcast before you do that. It will help you out big time. Greg Cosell will join us on Thursday tomorrow. I'll be going over all the skill position signings with Joe Dolan on the Fantasy Feast podcast. So we got shows for you basically every day this week. We'll have new Spread the Word winner. That's someone that gives Ross Tucker Pod a Facebook review on Facebook.com. And then we've got sponsor confirmation email winner. You can just send me a picture of you with a Labatt Blue Light or Labatt Blue. Or you can actually go to the sponsor page at RossTucker.com. Take advantage of any of those sponsors. And I love, love, love doing the video shout outs for you guys at youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. Just thumbs up, comment on any video. Ross, I want one of those free, free shout out videos you do for somebody. Bam. It's that easy. It's also Big Show time. The Big Show. All right, Andrew. You know this person. You've signed contracts with this person. You are on some level friends with this person. At least friendly. <laughs> we need to get your thoughts. And I've been seeing you on Twitter, at Andrew Brandt. Remember, I'm Ross Tucker. For those of you listening on the business of sports, we like to do a simulcast every few weeks because... We just like to. We want to make sure Business and Sports podcast listeners check out the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. And Ross Tucker Football Podcast listeners need weekly Andrew Brandt on the Business of Sports, even when he's not here on the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. We are, I guess, 24 hours into quasi-free agency, which that's a whole other question we'll get into. Why do they even have this period anymore? It's a total waste of time. We all know what's going on right now. But I'll start with this. Aaron Rodgers, still not confirmed with the Jets. What do you think is going on here, Andrew? Yeah, Ross, always good to do this together, especially this time. It has been only 24 hours, but you would think Jets fans, and to some extent Packer fans, it's been 24 days. And it probably has been since the end of the season, since we expected an answer from Rodgers. What I think is going on, a couple things. Number one, it appears we only have one suitor for Aaron Rodgers, and let that sink in. Only one team has expressed interest. That's the New York Jets. That really reduces the trade package that the Green Bay Packers are going to get back. Maybe they're trying to wrangle out some more trade assets in this deal where they're only negotiating with one team. What else could be going on? There's rumors about trying to get Alan Lazard or Randall Cobb on that team as part of the Aaron Rodgers package and bringing his old buddies on the receiving side to the Jets. That would mean a Jets receiver or two would have to come back in the trade. That could be part of it. There's trade negotiations going on about multiple players, not just Aaron Rodgers. It could also be something where this option, getting a little technical here, in the contract requires an exercise starting March 17th. Now, normally that would just transfer to the Jets and it's not a big deal, 
But maybe there's a reason. Maybe this cannot be consummated until March 17th, because the option exercise of Roger's money for 2023 starts on that day. So I don't know if that's part of it. But what we're learning is that Aaron Rodgers is a different cat. It's not going to go quickly. And maybe he's still thinking about options. But the last thing I'll say, Ross, is the one option that does not appear available to Aaron Rodgers, we talked about this for weeks now, you and I, and especially I have, is the Packers. It's not an option. And I would be more shocked than anyone if we somehow come out of this and he's back on the Packers. I don't think they want that. And I would think he doesn't want that. So what is complicating all of this is that it's either trade or retire. And I don't see him walking away from $60 million, even though he's a different guy. So it'll happen. Just seems when and how is the only questions left. You know, I was curious, Andrew, and wondering, like, what is going on? Like, what? why? Because they make it sound like everybody is waiting on an answer from Rodgers. You know, and, and yeah. I thought, I saw your tweet, which I kind of agreed with, which was that the Packers and the Jets know what's going on. Aaron Rodgers knows what's going on, but for whatever reason, he's waiting before he actually announces it. I know that's very important to him. I would argue maybe irrationally important to him in terms of the information and where it comes from. Trey Wingo said that it's a done deal yesterday. Um, and Trey Wingo was the first one that had said that the Jets and Aaron Rodgers were talking. He was also the one two years ago that said if Randall Cobb comes back to the Packers, then Aaron Rodgers will. That was back in 21. So Trey Wingo is pretty plugged in to Aaron Rodgers somehow, some way. He says it's done. Um, and I was kind of wondering what's going on. Now I almost think, Andrew, that – Rodgers knows this is the most leverage he'll ever have, and he's trying to get what he wants in the form of Cobb and Lazard, and I guess I kind of respect it. And I'm not sure. I think it's probably done, Ross, like Trey said, but I'm not sure the compensation's done. In other words, they're going to do this. But if you're the Jets, what are you paying for one year of Aaron Rodgers? And if it's going to be two years, that's a different story. So my guess is we're going to have a pick in 2023 draft, then a pick in 2024 draft based on Rogers' performance in 2023. Then I would think there's something in the trade that says if Rogers is on the team in 2024, something else goes back to the Packers. Because even if they say it like they did last year, I don't think there's any reason to believe Aaron Rodgers is committed past 2023. So that becomes a complicating factor in the trade. I mean, we had two teams interested in Jimmy Garoppolo. We had three teams interested in Derek Carr. We have one team interested in Aaron Rodgers. I know that he's older and I know the money's higher, but, but still, the Packers are going to be hard-pressed to get something – impressive out of this trade compensation wise. So my guess is it could be done in that we're going to make a deal, but leverage is a big thing right now for Aaron, for the Packers who saw the jets fly out there in a private plane and for the jets who know they're the only suitor. So this is high stakes stuff. Who's going to blink first? Well, that's what's interesting because the comments from Mark Murphy the president yeah. of the Packers made it very clear, Andrew, that they don't want Aaron Rodgers back. And that was the first time that it was very obvious from someone of authority that they don't want him back. Number one, that couldn't have made Aaron Rodgers feel good, even if he knew that that's the case. For them to publicly come out like that, I, I got to imagine that bothered him, Andrew. And then number two, you know, how do the Packers have any leverage? I mean, they clearly don't want him back, and they clearly don't want to pay him 60 million. If I'm the Jets, I feel like I would I would ride a really hard bargain. And I know the Packers can say, well, the Jets need him now. The Jets don't have any other options. I think that's kind of what's going on, you know, yeah. is that both sides think that the other side doesn't really have any other choice. 
we haven't talked about this in a while. This this deja vu for me, Ross, is just eerie. Let's just go through it quickly. <laughs> 15 years ago, we had a quarterback who had sat on the bench for three years behind a Hall of Fame quarterback, and we were ready to hand him the keys to the franchise and basically gave a message to Brett Favre, it's time. Here we are. 15 years later, we, there's a quarterback on the bench, first round pick, three years, about to send past a Hall of Fame quarterback. And the message given is we're ready to move on. It's uncanny, and it may end up with both players going to the Jets, too, which is amazing. It is exactly what went on with Favre. We didn't tell Favre we don't want him, but we made it clear we're ready to move on to Rodgers. And I think they've made it clear they're ready to move on to Love. I just think this is the natural ascension point, the pivot point, and the contract reflects it, too. So... Yeah, what's the trade going to be? I think it's going to be limited for the Packers, as it was with Favre. And a lot, I think, is going to depend on his performance this year, on what they get back, not this year, but next year in a draft pick. Because I don't know what they can ask for out of this draft. Like, okay, you know, you're the only option. So maybe that's part of it. Like I said, maybe a receiver or two comes back in the trade because they're about to sign two Aaron Rodgers cronies as receivers, it seems like, with Lazard and Cobb. So we'll see. You know, if I'm paying him $60 million for one year, mm -hmm. Aaron, uh, Andrew, and I'm the Jets, I don't really want to give anything of value hardly for, for Rodgers. I mean, I'm not giving up much in terms of a draft pick. If I'm paying him $60 million, by far the most in the NFL for one year, right? Yeah, I mean, I know they're not going to try to get Aaron to take less. That would be a bad idea because he's got sixty million guaranteed. Why would he do that? So unless the Packers can figure it out to somehow adjust his contract and pay some of that, I, if I'm the Jets, I'm not giving him sixty million and and a premium draft choice, right? Yeah, let's just make this clear: the Packers trade Aaron Rodgers. They're taking on a forty-plus million dollar dead money charge. That's extraordinary for the Packers as someone who managed that cap for 10 years and avoided dead money at all costs. That's an extraordinary cost. It's going to be the second highest ever to Matt Ryan, the Falcons. If they do pay some of that contract, whether it's a dollar, 10 million or $20 million, that only adds to the dead money. So it's, there's no way to get it less than 40 million, which is going to be the biggest charge on the Packers cap by far. They can actually make it more than $40 million just to get good draft pick back by paying some of the salary because the only way to pay it is in a bonus. So that's going to be hard to do, too. They're, they're in a rock and a hard place, Ross, because they went all in last year for some reason. You know, this is what happens when you grovel to a superstar year after year and now you want to move on. I don't know what they were thinking last year. Of course, he comes off two MVPs. But to get themselves in this situation, wow. I mean, the Packers went all in on a guy that was year to year at, at most last year. It's fascinating. It really yeah. is. Um, I do want to get your thoughts Ross, on some of the other things going on since we're in free agency. And really Ross. even last Friday evening, Ross. the trade – which uh, on, was – oh, go ahead. I'm, since we're co-hosting this, I want, I want your opinion. What do you think will happen and when? Um, I think Aaron Rodgers will get traded to the Jets, and I think it will happen probably in the next 24 hours. For I what? think he is squeezing every ounce of the leverage out of it, and because he knows that – once the trade happens, once he allows it to happen or says he's on board, he knows that he doesn't really have the, any leverage anymore. He can't re really get the Jets to do what he wants to do. But the most leverage, it's like I think you've tweeted this before, at Andrew Brandt. I'm at Ross Tucker NFL. But you know the most leverage that any impending uh, free agent has for their own team is like the 30 minutes right before free agency starts. Right? right. Well, I think Rogers has figured out that once he accepts the trade, once the trade's official, 
the Jets don't really have to do the things that he tells them to do. But now, right now, is when he has the ability to kind of make the Jets do what he wants. And whether that's just getting players to New York that he wants to play with, or maybe just hooking up his buddies. And honestly, it's so rare, Andrew, for a player to have this kind of leverage that I kind of love it. I mean, I kind of love when a player, you know, what's the old expression? Now it's fun when the rabbits got the gun. Now it's fun <laughs> for the teams when it's the player yeah. having the leverage over them. Rodgers did it last year. He's doing it this year. And I think it's hilarious. It makes me happy. You're so right. I mean, as someone who negotiated 10 years on the team side, it's rare when you don't have the leverage. It's rare. Most of the time you're dealing with guys that'll take whatever you offer them most of the time. And then sometimes you got to squeeze out a few hundred thousand here or there. But this is rare where they're like, yeah, Rogers knows he's just going to be another player on a contract in a couple of weeks. So, yeah, I get it. I agree with you on that. Um, I went from thinking it was annoying and not liking the way Rodgers was handling it to now, like I said, I, I legitimately respect it on some level because he realizes how unique of a situation this is. And he's got certain players he's comfortable with and he wants there. Now, the only thing that bothers me a little bit about that, Andrew, is like, well, what's wrong with Garrett Wilson, Elijah Moore, Corey Davis? You know, he hasn't played with those guys. They might be awesome. He might love playing with them just like he learned to love playing with Christian Watson last year. So that's the thing I think is a little bit strange there, right? Is that yeah. it's like, you know, why, why do you think Randall Cobb is better than Elijah Moore? Maybe he doesn't even think that. Maybe he just wants him. You know, maybe he just wants him there because they're buddies. Yeah. I also think this narrative out there that Aaron's holding the, the team hostage, he's not holding the Packers hostage, assuming he's not coming back, right? They're going to take the $40 million cap hit whenever. They can take it tomorrow. They can take it in two weeks. They can take it in a month. And then in terms of what they're going to get back from the Jets, that's probably their whole, they're the ones holding that up, not Aaron Rodgers. So I, there's no holding hostage anywhere unless these teams have agreed to terms and they're just waiting for Rodgers to give the go-ahead. I think that's been done. If you are being held hostage – Andrew, my recommendation is to drink Labatt Blue Light. <laughs> There's no better way to endure a hostage situation than drinking some Labatt Blue Lights with your friends and living life to the power of we. Always enjoy responsibly, of course, beer, Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. I do want to get your thoughts on the huge trade for the Panthers and the Bears. Yeah. With the Bears getting two ones, two twos, and DJ Moore from Carolina. And I thought it was really interesting that both Albert Breer and Peter King said that the Panthers don't necessarily know who they're going to take with that number one overall pick. So start with just the trade itself between the Bears and the Panthers, Andrew. I have a couple of thoughts. Number one, it's so interesting that an unknown rookie, whoever it is, will garner two ones and two twos when we're talking about Aaron Rodgers getting a mid-round pick or when we're talking about whoever veteran making how many picks to, to get them. We That's what I mean here is that people underestimate my side of the world. They underestimate the business side of these trades, the financial. So if it's Bryce Young or CJ Stroud or whoever it is, they're going to make in four years – less than Aaron Rodgers or Lamar Jackson is going to make in one year. That matters. People have to understand that. They're getting the two ones and two twos, not because Stroud or Young, whoever is going to be this Hall of Fame player. Part of it is because they're going to have this player under minimum wage relatively for four years. Again, I'll say it, four years making less over four than Lamar Jackson is going to make over one. So people have to think about that aspect. The other thing that strikes me about the trade, Ross, is the Bears. The Bears have $100 million of cap room. The Bears, before DJ Moore, had one player making over $10 million, Eddie Jackson, at $12 million something. They are by far the lowest payroll in the NFL. 
And at some point, they're going to have to pay someone to meet these minimum threshold standards for spending by teams. So they almost need to pay DJ Moore $20 million. And then they signed some free agents yesterday. They're going to sort of add to their payroll. But I've never seen a team like the Bears, where going into last week, their highest paid player made $12 million. And they basically had a, a payroll of rookie contracts. So they're going to start paying people and they have to right now. As for the Panthers, they're taking a big swing. And, you know, you know, the old saying can't do anything without a quarterback. So that's the way they're going. Do you believe that they don't know who they're going to take with the number one overall pick, that there's a couple that they might choose from? I'm going to say they have a pretty good idea. (laughs) <laughs> you know could always change but i don't think they're trading up not knowing who they want honestly i don't think i would feel good about it if i'm a panthers fan if they didn't <laughs> know who it was really you traded all that you don't even know who it is you don't even know which guy it is that you like really I mean, that the, wouldn't make me feel real good yeah if i'm the, a panthers fan the 49ers, um, the 49ers traded three picks to get to number three and then they acted like they didn't know they were going to take trey lance i, I never believed that one I never understood that whole situation at all. Last thing, Andrew, you talk a lot about the Rams. Mm. Well, we're seeing the other side of it with the Rams now. They had to trade Jalen Ramsey to the Dolphins, and it feels like those teams are almost switching, right? The Rams are going more to getting draft picks to rebuild this thing, whereas the Dolphins are more all-in with Tua on the rookie contract. Yeah, it's interesting that, you know – you're never going to win an argument, and maybe you agree with this side of things, Ross. The quote, "But they won a Super Bowl." You're never going to, you're never going to uh, get those people to convert. I get it, but that team now they're old, <laughs> they're cap strapped, and they got to start over. They basically are going to try to be the, the Chicago Bears for the next couple of years. So it's really something the the downfall of that team, how fast they fell. And now you got Stafford, who's untradeable and uncuttable, Donald, untradeable, uncuttable, Cup, untradeable, uncuttable. Obviously, they're star players, but after that, it's hard to find a lot of people you recognize on that team. They cut Leonard Floyd and of course this Ramsey trade. Uh, you know, it's just a, it, how is Sean pa- Sean McVay going to be as a coach of a trust the process team? We'll see. It's a whole new thing in L.A. Um, and as for the Dolphins, an interesting contract restructure with Ramsey. He actually took a seven million dollar pay cut in 2023 because I guess they wanted less cash, not only less cap on his deal, but he gets it all back in 2024 on a full guarantee. I don't know if I've seen that, Ross. I've seen cap restructures, but someone actually take less cash but get it back on a guarantee next year. That was really interesting to me. If you're listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, you got to check out Andrew on Twitter, at Andrew Brandt, B-R-A-N-D-T, and listen to the Business of Sports Podcast every week. If you listen to the Business of Sports Podcast, please check out Ross Tucker Football Podcast. We are – three times a week in the off season and daily during the season. Andrew, appreciate the time. Always great chatting with you. Great, Ross. And for people tonight, tonight, Tuesday. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot about this. I forgot about this. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to, because we're technically on the eve of free agency, since even though it already started, I'm going to do a webinar. So go to sportsbusinessleague.com, sportsbusinessleague, all one word, dot com, and you can sign up for tonight's webinar all about cap contracts what goes on in new league year how teams structure contracts right now what are the real contracts what are the fake ones i'm doing that tonight so just in time you hear this sign up for tonight 8 p.m eastern and i'll see you tonight on the web love it thank you andrew thanks ross tux takes going to be a little bit different today Because so many things have happened in the 24 hours since free agency started. I'm just going to go rapid fire team by team. The Arizona Cardinals, really all they've done is re-sign Kelvin Beecham uh, to play tackle, which is interesting because he just kind of came out and said Kyler Murray needs to mature. I thought they might move on from him. Falcons have been very aggressive. 
It's almost like the Falcons are trying to be, you know, like this version of the Eagles, right? They got Desmond Ritter, second year contract. So what are they doing so far? They are signing um, Chris Lindstrom to a huge extension. David Anyamata, the D tackle. Caden Ellis, the linebacker, both come over from the Saints. So you're making your opponent uh, weaker. They got Jesse Bates, the safety from the Bengals. They traded for John U. Smith. Taylor Heineke is a backup quarterback option. They've been very aggressive. The Ravens really have just cut Calais Campbell uh, in a salary cap move. That's all they've done so far. The big move for the Bills was signing Connor McGovern, former Penn Stater, center guard, which they needed improvement there. They needed something better inside. So he can play both right guard and center for them, which gives them some versatility. Carolina has been somewhat aggressive, bringing in Shy Tuttle at the tackle, Von Bell at safety, and they got Bradley Bozeman back at center, which is good because uh, now they have all five O-linemen back. The Bears have been very aggressive. They got a couple linebackers. Interesting for them to get not one but two off-the-ball linebackers, Tremaine Edmonds from the Bills, TJ Edwards from the Eagles, and then up front, they got Nate Davis, the guard from the Titans, and Demarcus Walker, the D-end from uh, the Titans as well. Bengals have really just re-signed their own, Jermaine Brett, Pratt, at linebacker, but they lost both safeties. They lost Bates and Bell. The Browns have some money. They're using it. Ethan Posick is back at center. They got Dalvin Tomlinson, a run-stuffing D-tackle that they desperately need. And Okoronko. Okoronkwo, the linebacker from the Texans. Cowboys have done nothing. Broncos, one of the very spendy teams. Jarrett Stidham is a backup quarterback. Manhurts is a blocking tight end. Two O-linemen in McGlinchey and Powers. Zach Allen at D-lineman, who I really like. And then Alex Singleton, good for him, man. Three years, $18 million. The former CFL player. How about the Detroit Lions? The big moves for them, getting my boy Alex Anzalone back, who was on the show. I was at last week or the week before. Three years, $18.75 million. Good for him, man. So happy for him. Cam Sutton got a three-year deal worth $33 million, including $22.5 million guaranteed. He played well at corner last year for the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Packers have only re-signed Kayshawn Nixon. They're still waiting to clear some salary cap room, <clears throat> Aaron Rodgers. The Texans, I like the Texans' strategy. Texans are going straight for all of the Tier 3 free agents. Case Keenum, the quarterback, Andrew Beck, Scott Questenberry, Chase Winovich, Hassan Ridgeway, Jimmy Ward. They're getting the guys that nobody else is really going after. Colts just got a kicker and Matt Gay. That's about it. That's a little interesting. The Chiefs moving on from Orlando Brown. They get Jawan Taylor. Four years, 80 million, 60 million guaranteed. Supposedly going to put him at left tackle. The Raiders got Jimmy G and Marcus Epps. Jimmy G will be the starting quarterback for the Raiders. I didn't love some of the things that are coming out about the Raiders. I might save that for Thursday. Chargers have really just gotten Eric Kendricks. At linebacker, Austin Eckler wants a trade. That's not going to happen. They'll figure out a way to make him happy financially. Mike White, the Dolphins got Mike White to be a backup quarterback. And David Long, I like the David Long signing. Two years, $11 million seems very affordable for David Long. He was a good player for the Titans. And Mike White is a good backup quarterback. Vikings have gotten Marcus Davenport which means they'll probably move on from Zadarius Smith and tight end Josh Oliver, who's a good blocker. Patriots have re-signed Jonathan Jones. That's their big move so far. Devin McCourty retired. The Saints bringing back Jameis Winston. It's a little surprising given the deal they just gave Derek Carr and given the fact that what happened with Jameis last year. I don't know that I really understand that. Big move for the Giants is Bobby Okereke at linebacker off the ball. Jets are waiting and waiting for Aaron Rodgers. The Steelers got Patrick Peterson. The Niners made maybe the most impactful move of all so far, if we're talking about the Super Bowl, 
And that's signing Javon Hargrave. Four years, $84 million. He gets uh, a lot of money, $25 million in year one. They're taking a player from the team that won the NFC Championship and putting it on the team that lost the NFC Championship. That could be a swing player right there for two of the best teams that are out there. The Seahawks got a big signing in Draymond Jones, exactly what they needed. Um, the Bucks traded Shaq Mason to the Houston Texans and re-signed Jamel Dean. The Tennessee Titans have signed Andre Dillard. He'll be their left tackle now. That's an interesting fit with Mike Vrabel. Um, you know, Dillard's not the most physical offensive lineman. I, I'll be curious to see how Vrabel feels about that. And then the Commanders, they've been kind of active, getting Andrew Wiley at right tackle, Nick Gates, interior offensive lineman. So happy for Nick Gates after that terrible, terrible injury. Man, I went through that fast. Loved it. Um, shout outs are in order. We'll have my, 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 we'll have more on Thursday with Greg Cosell. Shout outs, of course, to Pizza Boy Brewing, Sporticulture, HumanHeadNYC.com, SteakhouseSports.com, Go-Bangles.com, Evergreen Economics, BackOfficeSchedule.com, and of course, MyFrontPageStory.com. I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found.